All right, welcome back everybody. Uh, today we're going to be starting to move stuff from Inky over into Unity and we're going to be looking at how to set up these scrolling windows for our text and scrolling window for buttons for responses so that we can have truly branching dialogue. So let's dive right in. So where we left off yesterday, we have our story that was written in Inky uh, using the ink language. And this has multiple paths, so there are multiple choices. Uh, I used diverts, and the story eventually ends. I'm going to count this as being just one dialogue with one NPC. So in order for me to make this work, the first thing I need to do is open up the Unity project that we have right here. And in the Unity project, um, there's a few different ways that you can get the ink tools into your project. Number one, you can go to the Asset Store. If you don't have this Asset Store tab, you can go to Window, choose Asset Store, and it'll pop up. And if you just search for Ink, it's the Ink Unity integration, this one right here. And you can download it and apply it to your project from here. Uh, you can also, like I mentioned on the last video, uh, go to the Unity integration part of inklestudios.com backslash ink and there's a link to the GitHub and you can download the Unity package from here. Uh, I don't know why, but I kind of prefer to do it this way. Once you have your Unity package downloaded, if you do it through the Asset Store, it'll guide you through this. If you're using the GitHub, from here you need to go to Assets and import a custom package. And my package is on my desktop right here, the Ink Unity integration 0.9.22. And I'm going to import this. It'll come into its own folder and there is some sample stuff that comes with it that we can look at as part of our code as we're getting this all together. For today though, I just want to take a look at how I want this to be set up. So we'll let this install here. Alright, so now that that's installed, if I go to my assets folder, I can now see that I have a uh, plugins, and inside the plugins folder I have ink. There's a readme file here, which talks a little bit about how to get started. And there's also, back on that web page, a uh, basics tutorial. Now in here, I can also find uh, an example, and in the example there is an ink story that you can use. Now once you have an ink story in your actual project, if you highlight the story and not the JSON file, you can press play and you get this little side menu that comes up. So uh, here's their uh, practice story. So I looked at Monsieur Fogg. It can contain myself no longer. What is the purpose of our journey? A wager, he replied. A wager? He nodded. Surely that is foolishness. He nodded again. But can we win? Uh, that is what we will endeavor to find out, and after that, the day passed in silence. So here's their little story that they have to come with it. This has nested choices and gathers. It doesn't use any knots or stitches, though. So I'm going to do something similar to this, but the main thing with the example is there's a script that shows you basically how to use the story and put that onto anything that you'd want to inside your Unity scene. And we're going to be referencing that in just a minute here. So know that we have that. Now I'm going to make a new folder specifically for my ink stories that I'm going to be using. So this new folder, I'm going to call this um, Dialogues. And I don't know the name of this character who's having this dialogue, so I'm just going to call it Character1. And then inside here, I'm going to put that test dialog that I created in the previous video. And that's currently located on my desktop. And I've got my dialog test here. Oh, yeah, dialog test is what I want. This is from a live stream I did, but you don't have to have followed the live stream at all. I'm just going to grab this test and drop it into my files. Now, if you were making your uh, ink story from Inky, you can from here. Uh, save your project as and save it into here. And once I do that, I now have the same thing that I had for their sample. Um, stop it and load the new story. There we go. So, what do you want? Hello. I want to ask about the cave. Go back. 
about the town, go back about the lake. I don't want to help her about the monsters. Go back and then leave. And then that's the end of the story. So here's this dialogue. Now, uh, now that I have this in here, I'm going to create a new NPC. And to do that, I'm going to use my art. And I'm going to put my NPC over here in this area that I'm calling the village right now. I don't have a ton of space for my NPC. Um, but I am going to use... I mean, I don't have a... Not a ton of space. I don't have an actual um, neat character for my NPC. So I'm going to use this base character that comes with the assets that we've been using. Um, let me make sure I have this set up the way I want it to be. This is not sliced. I'm going to do goodbye cell count. Looks like there's four columns and four rows. Slice. So we'll apply that, and I just want the one, so apply. Um, I'm just going to grab this one right here, I think. I'm just going to pull it into my world. The layer that I have everything on is Y sort. So I'm going to put the, this on the Y sort layer. There we go. And I'm going to rename this to be Dialog NPC. Now, one of the conventions I've been having since the big refactor is whenever I add something, I want to make sure it's part of the room that it's in. This is room 5, so I'm going to make sure that I take my dialogue NPC and put them into room 5. And then room 5, we have things that they're watching out for. I'm going to make this 1, so that we're looking out for one respawn object, and that's going to be my dialogue NPC. All right, cool. Uh, if you weren't following along with the tutorial, you just you just need to have an NPC. Now I'm going to add a few more things to my dialog NPC here. I'm going to add a box collider, and I'm going to resize this to be essentially just where we would consider to be the NPC's feet. I'm going to make a child object here. And this is going to hold another box collider, but this is going to be the dialogue trigger. So this one needs to be a trigger, and I'm going to size this about as big as I'd want it to be for the player to be able to interact with them. And I want the center to be... I want this to be 0, 0, I think. I do. And for my size, I'll make this 1.4 and 1.5. Alright, cool. Um, now, I have some pre-made scripts here that I can use. I want to determine if the player is inside this trigger um, so that I know whether or not to start the dialogue. But for now, I'm going to leave that for the next video. For now, I'm just kind of setting stuff up. So I've got my, my NPC in here, and I want to make sure that they're going to interact with my player on the Y sort correctly. So I'm just going to walk my little duder over here haha <laughs> okay cool looks like the uh, uh, is it the Z or is it the layer so what's happening right here is my player isn't interacting with it and I have inside my player uh, I've got a rigid body box collider. My player's on the player layer. I wonder if I have it set so that my project settings and then my 2D physics have the player not interacting with the fault. So player, no, player interacts with the fault just fine. So back here to my dialogue in PC. Oh, I used a regular box collider. That's the issue. This needs to be a box collider 2D. This is what you get when you don't work on a project for a while. You, uh, you forget some basic stuff. Always be kind to yourself when you take some time away from your project. Everybody needs their own time. And you need to be kind when you come back if you forget how to do things. So this needs to be a box collider 2D, not a box collider. It needs to be a trigger. I thought there would be more options. And then I'm going to resize this to be 
No, hey, come back. I'm going to resize this to be nice and big so that the player can interact with it. I think I just made it bigger than it was before, but that'll be fine. Now let's test to make sure that the player is interacting with the regular collider and not the trigger collider. So if I go over here. Okay, that's better. Oh, and the Y sort isn't working properly because I don't have them set up at the right uh, bottom. So the Y sort bases it on the uh, pivot point. So I want to do create by cell count again, four columns, four rows, but I want to make sure I'm putting the pivot at the bottom. Now, with that done, the pivot should be should work better. This is I I, I don't need to be doing this right now. <laughs> I'm just kind of it's going to bug me if I don't work on it right now while I have the option to. So let me All right. Well, whatever. I'll 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 fix that in just a minute. Now the next thing I want to do here is I want to create a canvas for the dialog. So in my canvases here, I currently have different canvases for the player UI, the place name, the dialog, uh, the pause, and the event. Now my dialog canvas right now, if I make all of these elements turn on, is really, really small. It's just this. I want to have branching dialog, which means I want to have a different dialog canvas. So I'm going to rename this to be Instead of dialogue, I'm going to call this um, we'll call this sign dialogue canvas, and I'm going to make a new canvas under this one. I'm actually just going to duplicate the one that I already have, and then this is going to be player dialogue canvas or NPC dialogue canvas or something like that, so I know it's different. Um, let's turn this off again. Now in here, I'm going to get rid of this dialog frame. I want my dialog to take up a good chunk of the screen, but I don't want it to cover the middle. So I'm going to have like a frame here, and it's going to have inside it the dialog, and then the choices, and then optionally you can have something for like your um, your player portrait. And I'm I'm going to add the player portrait just for funsies, but it's not necessary. So. In my player dialog canvas here, I'm going to make a new uh, UI panel. And I'm going to manipulate the anchors first before I manipulate the actual size. So I want this to be something about like that, and then in a bit. So looking over here at what my anchors min and max are, I'm going to put my x at 0. Let's do 6.5 and my x max at 0 0.95. No, let's do 9.75. That's good. I'll put my y at 0 0.25 or 0 0.025 and we'll put the max at 0 0.9. That seems pretty good. And then I'll set all of my distance from the anchors to be 0. I'm also going to make this fully opaque. Now I have a um, UI pack that I got from Kenny, and I'll include a link to that in the description. And I want to use I want to use some of these backgrounds here for my dialogue canvas. So I think I already have one set up. Let's create one though. So you have this great big thing. Um, I'm going to click and drag to choose what I want to have. And then you can see that that makes a blue box. The blue box is the sprite itself. I'm going to want this to resize correctly. So I'm going to drag these green things to make it be able to do something called nine slice. Nine slicing allows it to keep the corners in the right perspective without stretching them while tiling what's inside. So I'm going to leave the pivot at center here, and I'm going to call this dialog frame. And let's
let's apply that. Now back out of my sprite editor, I want to go to my dialog panel and I'm going to apply the dialog frame as the image. And I want to make sure it's sliced, which it is. It looks like it's not slicing quite correctly here. Let's find out why. Could have, oh, no, nope, that's why. So when I moved what I thought was the center or the nine slice thing, I was actually moving the frame itself. There we go. Let's apply that. There we go. That's better. Now, if I click over to the game view, you can see how it's going to look in game. I might want this a little bit wider, but I think that's going to be okay. My player's always going to be somewhere near the center of the screen, so this way I'll still be able to see them when the dialog pops up. Um, I don't know why I hit play. I think probably just to make sure that... Yeah, I'll still be able to see the player. Alright, so now... Um, I'm going to rename this from panel. I'm going to call this dialog panel. And then I'm going to make two elements of this. One element is going to be something to hold the ongoing dialog, and the other is going to be something to hold the choices. And because I want to be able to have a lot of different things in there, I'm going to use something called a scroll rect, which I don't think I've used in this tutorial yet. So on dialog panel here, I'm going to right click go to UI and I'm going to create a new uh, scroll view. This is going to be the dialog scroll. And I'm going to uh, again manipulate the anchors first. So I want this to be a little more than the top half here. And then I'm going to set my anchors manually. So we'll do 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.9, and 0 0.9. And then I'm going to set my distance to anchors to be 0. Alright, so that's what's going to hold the dialog. And I'm using a scroll view so that I can have the dialog all together instead of just displaying one thing at a time. I, I like this because I have a tendency to zoom through dialog and then want to go back and read over it because I can read faster than games usually give me credit for. So I'm going to do that. You'll notice that we have scroll bars here both vertically and horizontally. We don't need that horizontal one so I'm just going to delete it. And then also on the dialog scroll I'm going to turn off the horizontal. I'm also going to turn on uh, clamped so that it's not unrestricted. Uh, there's, we're going to talk about some more of these later because we're going to want the dialog to always be at the bottom. Uh, I am, however, going to use a background for this. So currently we have this dialog frame, this image, oh no, sorry, that's not what I meant to look. Currently we have this background as a source image. I'm going to make this fully opaque and I'm going to again use one of these Kenny images. So I'm going to go into the sprite editor here. And I'm going to use, I think, this nice dark brown one here, which I haven't used yet. So I'm going to select it. And I went down too far there. OK. And it looks like I went up too far. All right. And now I'm going to do the same thing. So this can be nine sliced that I did before. So I'm dragging that in. I'm looking so that this green line is on the other side of these little divots here, because that's what's going to make it work correctly. And down. All right, cool. And I'm going to call this dialog background. And we'll apply these changes. All right. Now, for my scroll, so it's going to get dialog background. It's not great. It's not great, but it's not awful either. Okay, and now I want to do the same thing for the bottom. So I've got my dialog panel itself, 
and then my scroll. So I'm going to make a new scroll for the answers. So I'm going to duplicate this, rename it to be response scroll. And again, I'm manipulating the anchors before I, whoops, <laughs> before I manipulate anything else so that I can have my dialog window resize nicely. So we're going to go 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 on X. We'll go 0 0.05 to 0 0.35 on Y to give a little space between the two. And we'll space those to 0. All right, cool. Now the reason I'm doing this is now if your window gets resized, those anchors will make sure that the content resizes nicely with it. So I'll have my dialog here and my questions there. I can make this window the dialog scroll. I can make that go up just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. So I might as well do that here. I want the dialog scroll, not the thing. So let's bring that up to 0.925. Zero. Okay, cool. Now I could have this background be the gray one, so that these two look slightly different, but I think it's fine the way it is. Yeah, I think it's good. All right, now um, it's going to be kind of important to make sure that I have things uh, set up the way that they should be. So if you open up your scroll over here on the right, you have a viewport and then content. This content I'm going to rename to be the dialog. I don't know, we'll just call it dialog. Actually, we'll call it dialog content so that I don't forget what it is. And then for my responses, I'm going to open that up and then viewport and then content. I'm going to call this response content. Now you'll notice that when I opened it up, the scroll bar here went away. That's because the content currently is set to be slightly smaller than the actual scroll view. And the size of that content is what makes it need to scroll. You can see as I'm making it bigger, that scroll bar on the right is becoming bigger as well. We're going to be using what's called a content size fitter to make that work the way we want it to. So with my dialog content here, I'm going to add a new component. I'm going to add a vertical layout group. This will lay out my dialog vertically. Uh, I'm going to give it, let's say, 8 for spacing. My child alignment is going to be in the upper center. This is going to control the child's width and expand its width. And we'll also make a content size fitter. Horizontal fit is going to be the min size, but the vertical fit is unconstrained. So what this does is if I now make a, I'm just going to use an image. I now make an image here. Um, I want this to. Why is it not doing what I want it to do? Hmm. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. So there's a few things I want to do here. Um, first of all, in the vertical layout group, I'm going to uncheck control child size. Uh, but I am, my content size fitter, I'm going to set both horizontal and vertical fit to be preferred size. And the reason I want to do that is I'm going to have these uh, prefabs, which are going to be made up of an image and some text. And those are going to control um, they're going to be added in as new pieces of dialogue are added in. So what this will look like is I'll have this image and I'm going to make it say 310 wide. So it's almost as wide here. Now if I have each new piece of dialogue that comes in is going to add to this and then as you're playing um, I'm going to have the scroll view go all the way down. So you can see how this allows us to scroll up and down. Now, since I had it as clamped, 
there's no bounce here. Um, just because I don't, I don't think it fits this, but you can of course do whatever you like. So I just need one of these. So I'm going to delete the others. I'm going to make my image uh, not fully trans or not not fully opaque. I'm going to make it a little transparent, and then I'm also going to add to it a text mesh pro text element. And I'm going to size this again using the anchors and not the blue parts to be mostly the size of this image that it's in. So I'm going to make this x is going to go from 0.05 to 0.95 and then y is going to go from 0.1 to 0.9. I'll make these 0. Cool. Now I'm going to auto size this but that's going to make it want to be big. Instead of letting it be big, I'm going to set its max to be say 24 so that it fits a nice bit of image. I might need to play with this as I go. And now I'm going to make my vertex color kind of a dark gray. Let's put it more in like the orangey family. And then from here we can also change the font because I have a few others. I have this one. That one's kind of nice. The bit script isn't going to work very well. Let's do this one and that means I'm gonna to have to make it a bit bigger so my max I'll say is 36 yeah that doesn't look too bad now this I'm gonna change this from not the text but the image that's holding it I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna call this dialogue text prefab and I'm gonna add this into my prefab folder and do I have any UI stuff? I have game stuff. No, I want to keep this separate. So I'm going to make a new folder for UI stuff. I'll call this UI stuff. And then the dialog text prefab is going to go in there. And then I'm just not going to have this here because I'm going to generate them at runtime. So I'll delete that. I'm going to go through the same, a similar process with the responses. So for the response content, this is going to get a vertical layout group. Uh, this is going to be upper center. It's not going to control the height. Spacing, I'm going to give it 8. And a content size fitter, which keeps everything at its preferred size. And then I'm going to add to this a button. But I want a text mesh pro button. And I'm going to give this a width of 310, say a height of 100. Uh, that's a bit too big. Let's go. Uh, that's better. Now, in this button, I want to find the text from the Text Mesh Pro. Okay, cool. This takes up the whole thing, which is uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm having it go from 5 to 95% in both directions. And then we'll make these 0. Now I'm going to replace the button graphic in just a moment here. I'm also going to replace the text. And I want this to be centered, auto sized from 12 to 36. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, the button itself, I want to match all the other UI elements. So if I take a look at my art here, I already have a button I've made, but it's kind of a tan button, so I don't know if that's going to look okay. Oh yeah, that looks fine. That looks pretty good. How's it going to look if I have a bunch of them? Okay. This has been a lot of finicky video stuff, so I don't know if you guys are enjoying this or not, but okay, cool. That's good. Now I'm going to do the same with this. I just want the one and I'm going to make it a prefab. So in my prefab folder, UI stuff, I'm going to add my, I'm going to call this my response button. I'm going to add this to the prefabs and then I'll generate these at runtime so that they're not always there. Okay, 
So now I'm going to deactivate my dialog panel. All right, cool. So there we go. Um, I imported the ink um, library and then brought the ink story in that I had written in Inky. Uh, I showed you a little bit about how that works, but we didn't talk about how it's going to work in script. And then we set up the UI for the dialog panel. Now next time we're going to go through how to make the dialog panel actually interact with the story that's coming through to it from Inky. Um, you could, if you want to try this on your own, go ahead and take a look at the examples that are provided in the plugins folder. We're going to pretty much do it kind of like that, only we're going to use a more object-oriented method. They generate everything at runtime, so it's going to be similar to that. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description down below. I have a link to my Discord, which is an amazing community. Um, and people there are always showing off things that they've done and ways that they've expanded this, and they're always willing to help. So if you want to go check out a pretty cool, pretty chill, pretty helpful internet crowd, go see them. Uh, otherwise, I have my Twitter down below. I've started tweeting again because I'm posting videos again. And every once in a while, I'm going to be live streaming since I'm in quarantine right now. So <laughs> I hope everybody out there is staying safe. Um, flatten the curve. Enjoy. I hope everybody has a great day.